across. Um, I'm sure y'all are too, and I'm sure that anyone yes. listening can hear mm -hmm. us much, much better. Um, we haven't met here since March the 3rd, which is more than three months ago. So we're going to jump right into our review and discussion of items for our meeting next Tuesday. And the first one on there is 7.1, the budget amendment, a consideration of end of the year budget amendments done by Alicia Searcy, our finance director. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, what I tried to do was take a look at a, a projection and, and look to the end of the year and kind of see how much revenue and how much expense we were going to have. And after I looked over everything, it looks like we're going to have about $2.8 million in excess of what we've uh, budgeted. We've briefly discussed uh, back during a work session, I think, that if this was the situation that we would be interested in maybe spending about a third of that on capital items, a third on employees, and putting a third back into fund balance. So I tried to lay the groundwork for um, some ideas of what we might do with that. Um, and I sent you all a sheet that had the three categories on it. The first category was the capital items. And we had um, five items on there that came out of the 2021 budget. Those were radios for fire and CI, sheriff's equipment, uh, computers and copiers, turnout gear for the fire department, and uh, some furnitures and fixtures uh, for the fire stations. And. Um, so I, I would really like to see those items funded since we did take those out of the 2021 budget and they were specific requests from the department heads. Um, in addition to that, uh, we had a request from the tax assessor to do uh, a flyover um, and that's estimated to be about 104,000. Now they did have that savings in their budget. so. Um, they, they really have that money available uh, within their budget already. Um, we would just need that line item approved. Uh, Georgia State Patrol has asked for some radar equipment for some new officers that will be assigned to Carroll County, and they feel like the fine revenue uh, from having that radar equipment would come back to the county and compensate us for that. Um, Douglas County, I think, has already made a commitment to buy that equipment for the officers that will be located in Douglas County. Then we have a, um, an asphalt roller for public works. Um, Charles has the quotes on that. And then um, we have a compactor system for one convenience center. We have two convenience centers that could really benefit from having compactors there and ultimately I think it would save us money because it's going to save us trips um, from the convenience center to the transfer station. Now we put 60000 in there that after Charles and I sat down and looked at it, it would cost about $90,000 total to do the site work and to put the compactors in. So we would probably need about another $30,000 out of SPLOST. If, if that's a project that we want to pursue. Um, and then the last item is uh, $610,000 for public works ex expenses that have been paid out of the public works budget. Typically we pay the, those, we reimburse that back out of SPLOS. Those are, that, that is money that was spent on SPLOS projects. Um, and normally we would reimburse that money back to the general fund, but um, in lieu of the fact that we are tied on SPLOST funds, um, I think this would give us more flexibility in SPLOST if we wanted to put, leave this money in uh, the general fund and just increase the public works budget to cover that. Um, so that's, that's another idea, and that's the largest portion of that money. So that, that would really go to, to roads and 
um, road, in, road improvements. Um, then we have category two for the employees. Um, Human Resources did a lot of work on coming up with uh, several different options on doing a, a bonus structure. Um, the totals of those and kind of that structure were, were emailed to you. Um, there were three options that were originally emailed and those were equivalent bonuses. The one that, that kind of fit the budget or that amount of money the best would be uh, giving each employee $1,275 and then the part-time people a reduction in that um, permanent part-time 625 and then temporary part-time 300 with Bayless getting 150. Uh, Commissioner Chance asked that we take a look at it from the standpoint of seniority. Um, which I think is a good way to, to look at it too because the people who have been with the county the longest probably deserve more recognition and so they went to work on putting together a structure where the bonus would start at $250 for anybody less than a year and then if you had a year to five years of service you would get a $500 bonus. Um, six to ten years you would get $750 and then 11 to 15 years, you would get 1,000. 16 to 20 years, you'd get 1,250. Uh, 21 years to 25 years, you'd get 1,500. 26 to 30 years, you'd get 1,750. 31 to 35, we'd get 2,000. 36 years to 40 years, we'd get 2,250. 41 years to 45 years, we'd get 2,500. And then we've got one person that's actually been here over 46 years, so wow. that person would get 2750 The total of that bonus would cost $603,000. So there is some room if you would like to spend the nine, approximately 900000 on employees. There's some room to adjust this structure up some to give each employee a little bit um, more in a bonus compensation, but that was kind of as far as we went with the time that we had to work on it. And um, this is a work session, so you know I feel like it's a good time to talk about what your interests are and what you would like to do, and um, you know just figure out how if we want to spend this money, if we don't want to spend it, we can put it all back in fund balance. Um, we will have a significant amount of fund balance. Um, with the 949, I think, um, I, did, I didn't write that number down, but uh, we will be over the 25% that's recommended by uh, ACCG if we just put the 949 back in fund balance. These are estimates, projections. Um, if we get more revenue than I'm projecting, then these numbers will be better. If we get less, I, I don't think we'll get less. I went to a lot of um, time and, and, and walked through each revenue line trying to make sure um, that I had a good number to, to go from. I think we could have a little bit more revenue, and we may have a few more dollars in, in expenses of something that, that I may have overlooked. but. As it stands right now, um, we've got $54,581,000 in year-to-date revenue. So we're already a million two forty-eight over our budgeted revenue for um, 2020. And I feel like we've, we have conserved expenses very well uh, over the last few months with COVID and so I feel like our expenses will not will not come in at at our budgeted expense level. Now, we do have some things that we we need to purchase, and so I think it will be close. But I think most of our revenue is going to create um, create a surplus for us. Um, the other two things that um, we need a budget amendment on, and these these we need to do to make our bu budget balance. So the, these are ones that we we really do need to do. 
um, we had the accounting changes on the local energy excise tax um, where we had to recognize a revenue for the amounts that we were paying out to the cities, and that's 220000 Then we've got the intergovernmental revenue um, where when we did paving projects or other things for other municipalities or the school board, um, we recognize that money as revenue this year and also recognize those expenses as well as the uh, tax commissioner intergovernmental revenue and the, and the payment there. So there's $137,000 that makes that up. And then um, we've got the transit expenses where we were reimbursed from three rivers of about $45,000 and then we expense the vehicle repair and maintenance. Um, and then we've got uh, contributions and, and donations for the mental health program of 56,000, and then that'll offset their program expense. So those are, that's the budget amendment to take care of the accounting changes. And then we have a budget amendment just to meet budget. We, we do have a few line items that are over budget um, and I'm proposing that we offset those expenses with um, revenue from the TVAT. Um, that would be uh, an increase in that line item of $277,621 um, and we, we have way in excess of that. There's about $4 million in that TVAT revenue for this year. And we're going to ask for an increase in our legal um, services we've had about we're asking for a fifteen thousand dollar increase but there's been about a twenty twenty thousand dollars in expenses related to covid between uh, the emergency order and i'm sure stacy and avery can explain everything but we we had a, a, a fair amount of legal expenses related to that hopefully at some point down the road we might get that back through some gma or fema money um, we want a $41,000 increase in the clerk of court workers' compensation line, a $3,000 increase in trash expense for the hauling, and then a $120,000 increase in tipping fees for solid waste. Um, and that just that's just related to an increase in, in tonnage. Um, it seems like everybody's cleaning their house out while they weren't at work. Uh, but we've seen continual increases in, in uh, solid waste tonnage year over year. Uh, there's a small increase of $121 in planning and zoning. That's the fee that we pay to Three Rivers based on population. It was slightly over what we estimated it to be. And then uh, $47,500 in debt service interest. That was a change in the way I had accrued for last year and the auditors wouldn't allow me to accrue it so they pushed the expen all the expense into FY 2020 so that covers that. And then the $51,000 in operating transfer is money that where we paid money out of splice for the culverts and the asphalt and the gravel and we actually transferred that money back into the splice account to cover those dollars. Um, that were taken out of that account. So that's what. So that's a total of a $277,621 budget amendment for those items. And that's pretty much what I've got. I got so it. So we do have um, James Fulford's here representing the Board of Assessors if you have questions for him. Um, Butch Thornton told me he could not be here today um, with Georgia State Patrol. Um, he had to take his mother to an appointment, but he will be here on Tuesday, but I will also share with you his cell phone number that you could reach him to have further discussion um, on him. And of course, Charles is here for the asphalt roller discussion of the convenience center, which I'm thinking Surprise, Ernie and Steve. I know y'all are very excited about that and um, the other stuff. So <laughs> I believe you want to have, you have a question. 
Uh, yeah, for at least just to understand a couple of the <clears throat> larger figures here. So the available funds of the 2.814 at the top of the page, that's projected for 6-30-2020, right? That is correct. Okay. Uh, if I ran the numbers correctly here, uh, a couple, three weeks ago, we got, you know, this, this package uh, and going from those figures, uh, it looked like we were using about two and a half million a month out of the excess revenue over expenditures. Uh, if we continued with that trend, we would end up June 30 at about 3.5 million. So the 2.8 is a decrease from that, 700,000 decrease from that. It looks like we're using a little more than we thought, but. Well, we're actually going to end up at about 3.6. Okay. But I took out the other two budget amendments before I came. So the accounting right. change budget amendment and the amendment to meet the budget came out of the 3.6 to get us to the 2.8. Okay. So we'll end up at 3.6 million. Well, that's good. So the last figure around here, the motor vehicle title ad valorem tax fee of 1.865, of course, that totals exactly the 955 220 capital items and the 910 employee item so what is that that that's not an increase that we're expecting in title fees or something. well we have we have recognized that increase the tvat tax and the way it was calculated was changed last year and so the and the percentage that came so the state changed the percentage that came to the county Okay. And we recognized a, a large increase over our budget there. So our total revenues in TVAT is about 4.3, I think. And we had about $2 million budgeted. So we've got about a $2 million e excess in that line item. Okay. So this will take, this will take up that excess. Okay. So in other words, of that 1.865, that's already calculated into and, and from that 1.865, we're taking the 955 and the 910. Correct. Okay. Okay. Ms. Thursday, a couple of questions. On the capital lease interest, you explain that. Is, is that washing itself out in the budget, or is the manner in which you're having to do that, we're, we're actually seeing an increase there where you've had to, is it? The, the actual amount that we paid is, not increased it's okay it's true to the amortization schedule okay the periods in which we're accounting for it some of that interest went back to um, may and june of 2019 and i had expected to expense that in last year's budget and the auditors said since the majority of that interest would occur in 2020 they brought all of that back into 2020. okay thank you a couple other comments as far as the employee bonuses i appreciate you and miss lee working on coming up with a different structure to maybe look at seniority i think that's important for us to look at um you know whether we we feel that this is something we want to move forward with or not i think one thing that we need to keep in mind we're talking about if we put a certain amount back into into the reserve fund that technically will take us above where accg recommends that we be I think, though, that we need to, um, not necessarily in lieu of taking care of the employees, but when we, when we talk about that we may have some fluctuation in numbers there that we could put more into it or not, I think the board, we need to think about the bigger ideas or the bigger things that we talk about we don't have the money for. You know, we've talked about do we really have the money to do a pay study? Do we really have the money to start tackling, moving forward, giving employees true, um, you know, pay increases? We've been talking about, um, you know, the idea of a county admin building. We've been talking about the idea of, you know, putting forward things to maybe come up with a plan for that. We've been talking about uh, public works, which obviously you've addressed some of that in here as well, but making sure that we have enough to move forward. We've been talking about the um, fire chief's new five-year plan, which includes raises and includes equipment. We have some of that in here, but obviously not everything. We've been talking about some of the positions that are approved and been sitting out there for the sheriff's department, but technically to completely fund that moving forward, I know we're okay this year, but actually we'd have to come up with money to fund the rest of those positions. So 
I just think holistically looking at a, from a 5,000 uh, foot view as uh, Commissioner Reynolds likes to talk about a lot of times, I just don't want us to get caught up in the moment on a specific item where we're talking about, hey, we've got some extra money, do we want to put this here? And I'm fine with doing what the consensus of the board wants to do, and I think we all want to take care of our employees, but I just want to remind the board as we think about these utopia or bigger ideas, we need to remember when we come up with 300,000 here or 500,000 here or 200,000 here, we've got to keep thinking about those bigger items that we claim we don't have enough money for. We may have to start allocating to those, what I'm calling prior commitments, things that somewhere along the way we've got to seek to fruition. So I just want us to, to keep that in mind as we make these decisions on individual items. So. Well, in, in making commitments to salaries, that's a continual com commitment year in and year out and year in and year out. And um, we weren't really in a situation to commit to an increase for next year. So I guess in my thoughts, the bonus would show some appreciation to the employees um, and hopefully get a little money in their pocket until we can hopefully next year get through this this time of the unknown and and move forward and hopefully have money to do the raises with so um, right and i would agree with that i i just think there's a there's a concept in the community and sometimes a concept on the board we're doing great and look at our fund balance and we're and we should be proud of that but the other side we're talking out the other side of our mouth we don't have enough money we don't have enough money for this we don't have enough money for that we don't have enough money for this so what I'm saying is somewhere along the way, those two have to be married together. Yeah, you have to balance mm -hmm. them. And, and that's, I mean, I, I just try to lay out ideas of things that we've talked about. And, and if that's the way we want to spend the money, then we can. If we don't, if we would rather put it in fund balance, we can do that. Or if we would make a com long-term commitment to something else, we can do that too. So. And my comments, you know, are not directed at you. You've done oh, a great job. I'm, I mean, I'm, I, just, I'm just saying I, I, I want I, us to make sure we're thinking about these things as we make decisions on individual topics. Let's, let's keep in mind these bigger things that we continue to talk about. Where is that money going to come from? Well, this is a prime example of, you know, we have opportunities here. We may need to take a little here, here, and here to build up to do and accomplish some of those things that are still sitting out on the table. So right. my comments are not directed at you, just in general. Yeah, I think it's good good dialogue. If we could somehow monitorize that, I guess that's that's a great concept. Uh, I, I think if we if we do put in, like you said, some best guess figure for that like the new positions in the fire department I mean yeah it's gonna if we if we're coming up now with a 1.248 uh, budgeted revenue overage uh, that might all be eaten up you know uh, down the road in those type of things so I wonder if we could somehow get a dollarization of that amount to to see okay if we had those type expenses where would we where would we be <laughs> I, um, I feel confident that we can put a dollar on it if i know specifically i mean the, the firefighter positions um i can't remember off the top of my head but i had a number on when we went through all the budget that saturday when we went through the budget um work session, I had a dollar at that point.